individuality and encourage each other to grow, both within and outside of our relationship. I don't underestimate how hard it's going to be or what a huge life-altering commitment marriage is, but I just think we have the foundation to make it last. I guess my question is, should I be worried? My parents were my age when they got married, and they got divorced 12 years later. So often I hear people who are now divorced talking about how they got married too young, about how they didn't know enough about themselves to commit to another person for life, about how they were naive or rushing into adulthood with little understanding of what they were actually doing. So I'm looking to you, Sugar, to let me know, should I be more worried than I am about getting married this young? And what do I say to people who scoff at my engagement ring, instantly writing me off as a dumb kid who doesn't know what she's doing? Yours truly, a young bride-to-be. Well, wow. you, you know, young bride-to-be, you are not a dumb kid. You have written a very thoughtful letter. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a Jewish cone, you know. Uh, she's worried about not being worried. <laughs> But the truth is that you're asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the question is, how well do you know yourself? You say, I, I hear people are talking about getting divorced. They got married too young and they didn't know themselves. They didn't know enough about themselves to commit to another person. And that is really the essence of it. How well do you know yourself and how well do you know your partner? And you are right to be fearful, maybe not fearful, but a healthy concern because it's a big commitment. It's a big commitment to make whether you're 20 or whether you're, you know, 50 or 70. It's saying nobody gets out of this marriage alive. I'm going to be with you till the end of it. And not everybody lives up to that, but that is the dream in which marriage is consecrated. You're the last person, right, that I'm going to be with in this way, this deeply committed to. And you should take that seriously. And it sounds to me young bride to be like you are taking it seriously and that you are thinking about especially encouraging each other to grow because when you do get married young that means you're going to evolve and change a lot and especially through a really volatile stretch of years i think for me personally the reason that i probably only got married really in my late 30s is i just didn't know myself well enough and i would not have made a good spouse not because I wasn't caring or didn't have the right intentions, but because I didn't know myself well enough. I hadn't reached a place where I was truly comfortable with myself and ready to fully give myself to another. It sounds to me like you have done at least a lot of that work. And it's a process. It's ongoing. It's not like the moment you get married, you've made that decision and the work stops. That's when the work begins. Right. We like to pretend that marriage is this sure thing. We stand up there and make those vows and commit for life and, and maybe for that day uh, convince ourselves that this is our sort of insurance plan against being alone. Right. But the fact of the matter is, no matter what age you are when you marry, you don't know what lies ahead. You only know yourself at that given moment in your life. Right. Now, of course, I did get married very young. I married my first you? husband when I was 19. I, it was a month before my 20th birthday. I loved him fiercely. I knew myself well. I was a very self-aware 19-year-old. We were wildly in love. And I think that there's absolutely no question that I got married too young. You know, the, the, the fact that I got married that young contributes to uh, the reasons that we ultimately divorced. But I don't regret it. I mean, I think that I had lessons to learn. And that first marriage taught me a whole lot. I think that it's really wise for this young bride-to-be to be asking herself this question. Yeah. One thing I do want to say is we, we change a lot over the course of our lives all the time. Right. Um, I'm 46. When I'm 66, I'm going to want different things. Right. I'm going to be a slightly different person than I am now. And, and my partner is either going to remain compatible with that or not. And likewise right. with my partner. I mean, who knows what our partner's how they'll change over That's time. absolutely true. And so I think the only thing you can do is enter every union with consciousness, good faith, love, a sense of open-heartedness, and know that you can't predict or control what's to come. No. And I would say a couple of other things, young bride-to-be, because I sense that you're somebody who's very mindful. You're trying to be conscientious about this. And the larger thing that Cheryl's suggesting is we can't say what's going to happen. We can't predict the ways in which people change and evolve. So let yourself off the hook 
for not having a guaranteed to last marriage. And I can understand why the shadow of a divorce and talking with a lot of other people who've gotten divorced would loom over you and cast a shadow of doubt on this union. But what a couple things you might think about is marriage, like parenting, it's really happening when things go wrong when there's some adversity. It's easy to be married when you're young and in love and it's right at the beginning. It's when things go wrong that people are really tested and that they have to summon the best of themselves and sometimes that we have to withstand the worst of another person. That hasn't happened necessarily in your relationship, but you should be thinking about that. How have you guys interacted when things have been at their worst? And If there are things about those moments that unsettled you or that you think need to be revisited, yes, by all means, revisit them. And furthermore, I hope that you have both thought about and even talked about the kind of shape of life that you want to have. Basic stuff like, at this moment, I feel I want to have family, but not immediately. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you need to make a checklist and get all obsessive, but you guys should know or have a good sense of the sort of life that you want to lead at this particular moment. It can change. All of this is subject to change. But it, I think it is a good idea, especially if you want to allay some of your anxieties, to share these feelings with your partner and say, I am very sure that I want to marry you, but I'm, I'm worried that I feel so sure about it. And, you know, talk about things that have to do with the specific nature of how you might grow individually and together. Mm -hmm. Because the last thing you want in something as tricky as a marriage is to not be communicating all the way all the way to the altar. I think in a lot of ways what American culture does with marriage is makes it this big consecrating moment. It sells the false dream that it's going to be this, now you've made the big decision and the hard work is all done. And that's the biggest mark, I think, of the success of a, of a relationship, whether it's a friendship or especially a marriage. How well do you communicate? Mm-hmm. And so if you can say to your partner and to yourself, more importantly, young bride-to-be, that that checks out and that you really effectively communicate with this person and you're in love with them, why wait? And by ZipRecruiter. Some job boards overwhelm you with tons of the wrong resumes. Not smart. But ZipRecruiter finds the right people for you and actively invites them to apply. Smart. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash sugar. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Last Seen, a new podcast from WBUR and the Boston Globe, investigates the largest unsolved art heist in history. So about the time that he begins putting the duct tape on, he says, this is a robbery. The theft of half a billion dollars worth of art from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. When the FBI says, we solved it, we know who did it, it's like, no, you don't, because you don't have the paintings. Subscribe and listen to Last Scene Now on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Sponsored by Samuel Adams and ADT Smart Home. I do want to, I guess, offer one counter voice. Sure. Um, I know I just said, you know, I don't have any regrets about that first marriage. And, and what I really mean when I say that is I don't regret partnering myself with my first husband. I mm-hmm. don't regret the love we shared and the relationship we had and all of the things, good and bad, that happened between us. But, you know, I do think that uh, I, I shouldn't have gotten married. Mm-hmm. And... I will, in in some ways, just give young bride to be maybe a little something to think about. She's probably already thought about it. She but, is, yeah. But but why get married? I, I mean, uh, why get married at this moment in your life? Uh, the, you know, the two of you have been together for four years. I'm not again. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying you should have perhaps an answer to this question. Um, what would be wrong when you are so young with saying, well, let's live together. Let's uh, you know have a, a partnership, you know, that is everything but legal. Um, marriage is different than living together, than being a boyfriend and girlfriend. It's actually a, a legal contract that you make, not just with each other, but with society and right. with the community and the family. And it, it did contribute, you know, the fact that I was married and when I undid my marriage, yeah. that I actually had to get divorced was it added to my devastation because I was not just breaking up with this guy right. I had spent so much of my 20s with and who I'd grown up with, essentially. I was also having to go to the courthouse 
and get documents stamped and disentangle myself from a whole uh, sort of legal commitment. In I've the made, eyes of the law. In right. the eyes of the law. And I also felt, you know, I was divorced by the age of 26 and I felt like damaged goods. Huh. I felt like, how can I be a divorcee at 26? And so I guess the, the, the one word of caution, you know, I'm generally feeling like young bride-to-be that you're, you've got a great head on your shoulders and you're asking all the right questions to make a good decision for yourself. Mm. But one of those questions might be that you sit down with your fiancé and say, well, why are we doing this now? What right. would it look like, you know, if we did it in three years so that we do have a little more time to grow up and to test those uh, you know, to ride through those tumultuous waters of our 20s together to see if at the end of that, we still want to make that lifelong vow. Wow. So you've just totally unsettled the apple cart here. But actually, in a certain way, young bride-to-be, you started it, by which I mean you're unsettled and you need to listen to yourself about that. I think that the central thing that we can say for sure, we can both agree, is talk with your partner about this. You know, talk with your partner and say, I got this little voice inside me. And it isn't saying that I don't want to be married to you, but I'm worried that I'm not more worried about. It. There is some anxiety there. Mm-hmm. Um, and see what he has to say. I assume, anyway, that she has not necessarily shared these feelings with him. I always feel like it's a beautiful thing. I'm envious of people who find somebody who they can commit to, maybe because it took me so long to find somebody, mm-hmm. you know, but who, who finds somebody at this young an age. And I always feel like, oh, good on you. But it's also true that we do know that you go through so many transformations, especially at that time in your life. And if they're, if they're that deeply committed, there's no reason other than whatever reasons they might have having to do with an internal sense of we're ready, we're settled. Mm-hmm. E- either way, you do the best work you can do at the time. And that's the thing we know for sure, young bride-to-be, that no matter what you choose to do, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to be just fine. Whether that is you get married tomorrow, you get married five years from now, you get divorced 20 years from now, or you're married for the rest of your life to this wonderful partner you found lucky enough at such a young age. Yes. You're going to be fine. Amen.